Hi, I'm Josh Wagner. I'm pair three. Uh, my story begins with, towards my childhood. It started, I guess, whenever I was about two or three years old. I had my first encounter with a little boy that was at our house. Uh, I took him as being, I guess you'd want to say he was my imaginary friend. Uh, later on found out my mother came in the bedroom and saw I had a John Deere tractor sitting there in the floor that was rolling by itself. She got to look in and into it and I described my imaginary friend to her. She found out and I couldn't find out he was not imaginary. He was a spirit of the house that we were living in. Right outside of there was an oak tree that his family hit with a car and unfortunately he lost his life. At that age is when they found out that I had a spiritual gift. From there on, I ended up having many and several encounters. Uh, I've had a few other research groups come and speak to me and to come do research with them and to be their clairvoyant. Well, we got with pair of seven and the rest of the whole pair group, especially pair one, and found out my gift, and that's where it began with pair, the pair of files. You can watch the pair of files on your local cable television at Max South 99.1 or you can see it all over the United States on Roku, on the PEG.TV channel, or you can see it through the website's live stream at hillcountrynetwork.net all over the world. There's no other sheriff more renowned than McNary County, Tennessee's Buford Hayes Pusser. Known for his war on moonshining, prostitution, and illegal gambling along the Tennessee and Mississippi state line, Pusser left behind a legacy that's inspired movies, songs, and a television series. Pusser died on August the 21st, 1974, at the age of 36 in a car accident. His home is now the Buford Pusser Museum, but some believe he's still there, protecting the citizens of McNary County. High school, he joined the Marines, but he had asthma, so they gave him a medical discharge after boot camp. Then he moved to Chicago with his brother, John. This is his brother John, his sister Galia, and their parents. I told you Buford was 6'6". You can see everybody was very tall and Dewana was too. While he was in Chicago, he became a professional wrestler, Buford the Bull, the child of Pauline. She was just a single petite mom of two that went to the wrestling matches. They met and married in 1959, had Dewana in 61, and that's when they moved back to Adamsville. So this is Buford and Pauline in front of the original house that was here. The original house in that top picture burned in 1971. Buford had it built back with the exact same floor plan except he added the basement as his new living quarters. Because he would be safer down there and his family would be safer if he wasn't up here with them. He could go out on calls and stuff and not disturb anyone. And he bricked it. He bricked it. Mm -hmm. Yes, he bricked the house. Mm -hmm. Well, that was the original? Up in the top picture. In the top picture. Yeah, and see okay. they're standing in front of the original. 
here and here. Yeah, the floor plan was the same up here. Okay. They, the floor plan was exactly the same. Um, the well, I'm just gonna, usually we let the guests go and read the points of interest, but I'll go with you. This, this was Buford and Pauline's room before she died, and this was their furniture. Um, after she died in the ambush and you know, they had shot his chin completely off, Buford was distraught, and he said, get all of this out. Take everything out. He didn't want to see it. So all of this was in storage when the house burned. So this was actually the, her original furniture and dress and all that stuff. So are theirs. Oh, that was her dress. Mm -hmm. She was little. Mm -hmm. She was. Very petite. Uh, mm -hmm. This was Dewana's room. Um, when they rebuilt the house, Diane was the older daughter. She was very rebellious and didn't want anything to do with the movie, so that's why she wasn't portrayed in the movies, only Mike and Dewana. But she, she and Dewana had shared a room, but when they rebuilt the house, she was old enough to go out on her own, so it was only Dewana's room after that. This is the room I was telling you that Elvis and Johnny Paycheck and um, George Jones and Tammy Wynette, all that they hung out back here before the funeral. Wow. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask if Elvis knew. Mm -hmm. He did. I think he did. Mm -hmm. In fact, he slept in here the night before town, but he did not go to town. Um, he and Buford, he would go to Graceland. And people would go to Graceland. And they could just hang out together because neither one of them could really just relax in the public. Right. So, I was term and sheriff. He was running the year he died. He was going to, and he would have gotten it. Now, he had, he did, he served his term limit, 64 to 70, and then he um, had to sit out a term. He ran again, but he lost because they were all mad at him because he exposed Didn't them. Didn't they write his name in the ballot and he became constable mm -hmm. at one time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, the, the city officials and the county officials, they were mad at him because they were taking pay loss and turning the other way and letting the mob, the state line mob, that's who he was fighting against, they were had prostitution and gambling and illegal um, whiskey, but they killed people. Anyway, yeah, they would just murder people all the time. Now, wasn't that state line mom? Now, that was the Hathcocks, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And, um... And Toehead White. Right. Um... W.O. Hathcock mm -hmm. was the daddy. Louise was his daughter. Is that correct? Mm -mm. Jack was his nephew. Jack. Yeah, because it was, was Jack Hathcock. And Louise was... That was her married name. Okay. Right? All right. Okay, that's right. And uh, I've been reading about the state line. You know, the, the the movie portrayed Louise Hathcock getting shot twice in the face. Mm -hmm. Did did she? She, she? she did. Not in the face, but she was shot. She shot at Buford, and he shot back and killed her. Shot her, and she fell and still didn't die. And she shot her. He and shot that her happened at the Shamrock. Okay. Yes, gotcha. she okay. really owned the Shamrock Hotel and restaurant. Right. We stopped about that side today. Off topic of question: the uh, moonshine and. They were running. They, did that group ever have a logo on any of their jars? The reason why I'm saying that because I am a moonshine collector. Uh, I'll go to the I have popcorn, some of my popcorn set and stuff. Yeah. A while back ago, we were down there digging in a barn mm -hmm. in Ripley. In that barn, there was a old, old, old blue cork jar. Mm -hmm. On the lid, it had it hand wrote and a uh, like a lead based ink and it had like it had an S L and then uh, uh, state line the way when we figured it was like an S L G it was like for that state line gang mm -hmm. and they were not they were state line gang state line mob or Dixie mafia they were all uh, one in the like state like I said it had a and that paint and that's why it made me curious because of, that location, the man used to be a road child. And so it made me curious if he was involved with the state line game. And that's why I was curious if y'all had any. If y'all had any. That, that's a good, there's somebody in Mangerine County very well put that. just been a wealth of information he did. It's a college professor 
and um, he did years and years of research and came upon, see, his, he made his students do genealogy reports every year. And one of them came to him one year and said, I'm related to this Louise Hathcock, and she's evil. Mm -hmm. And so the professor started doing research on Louise and ran into all the Buford stuff. And he talked to the real people that were around back then, and he went to the courthouses here in our county and Alcorn County. And he's just got tons of evidence of what he's written. And awesome. he's written the most factual book that's ever been written. Do you know the name of it? I'm not half it. It's oh. called Ghost Tales of the State Line Mom. Oh, that's what you're that's reading. What I'm reading. Oh, see, you're, you're getting the best, the most factual reading. That's, reading. Reading. that's, that's yeah. awesome. Okay, mm -hmm. so is it on Kindle? It is on Kindle. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and so he, you know, that professor, um, when he came, you know, he came for a book, a book signing. It was a person. He knows all of this stuff. I was just talking to him tonight. Um, he knows so much that. If y'all wanted to talk to him, he is just, he's very, very knowledgeable. I'd love to talk to him. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, okay. this is the ambush that killed, that killed Pauline. They pulled, it was, they called you for, you know, it was a setup. They pulled up behind that Methodist chair and they came back by. Oh. Shot the fatal shot that killed her, shot his chin completely off. His deputy found his jawbone in a field later that day. Didn't they come up behind them? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they Buford and Pauline passed the church, church and, they, and, they, and you can see if you go there, you can see like if they were back there behind the church, there's a little road that goes along the cemetery. Okay. So you can see how they would have done that. Was that who was it? It's on New Hope Road. It's right there. You never found out who did it. Well, yeah. Buford wouldn't tell who did it because the lady the judges. One, yeah, in one account, he said it was a black Cadillac, and then in another account, he said it was a blue Cadillac. Mm -hmm. He was coming up with... He wouldn't tell them. ...vague details about it. But they all met their demise. They did. Mm -hmm. In prison, and a lot of them got killed. Most of them. Got killed. Yeah. One is still in prison. Really? Is that Nix? Mm-hmm. Nix. Mm -hmm. Not to carry a gun, and he did in the first three years that he was in office until the ambush where they killed Pauline. So then he did start carrying guns, and he had a, an obsession with them after that. And that was one of his guns. We have a long list of his guns. That was a police, a commemorative mm -hmm. one of his police issued them. It has his motto on the barrel. What's right is right, what's wrong is wrong, no matter who you are. This is his shoes, I know for sure. We've had controversy over that because I can't see him wearing that as long as we have that on the nose. I don't know if he bled, it broke his neck. He did have some. He went over that way. It shows tire marks taken off the town. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We think he broke, but he cut his brake lines. And the Dawsons, they were out. Did y'all mention the Dawsons? Okay. They bragged, two of those brothers bragged, they cut his brake lines. And then somebody, somebody ran him off the road. Because they, that, that takes off the town. So. so is there still a problem in this county? The moonshine and all that as well. <laughs> it might still be here, but nobody's making a big deal of it. So, this looks like then, from the way the tire marks are, that he actually lost 
he had no brakes. Right. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Wow. Somebody you know, could have seen that. Yeah, yeah, and we just don't know who all the mob was paying off back then. You know, the investigators that ruled it an accident, they could have been paid off to say that. Um, the family was so positive it was not an accident. And um, Miss Helen, his mom, she spent every dime of the life insurance trying to find out who it was. Wow, they had to have done it when he was in there getting a barbecue. Mm -hmm. Well, his car had been um, surfaced, and he had just gotten it back. And then he drove that car to Memphis the day he died to, to a press conference to announce that he was going to portray himself in the second movie. Uh huh. And then came home, mowed the yard, got in his Corvette, and to the... He did go to the barbecue place, but it also just sat at the fair for hours while they, you know, he was walking around doing the fair, the dunking booth, all that stuff. So. Mm. Somebody could have been, had a lake on him the whole time. Mm -hmm. They did, they were always after him. There's no doubt about that. That was never a secret. Dang, can you imagine living a life like that where you're mm -hmm. constantly And he wanted, you know, he's running for sheriff again and they didn't want like that. Well, that's, then that it mm -hmm. pretty much explains it, yeah. Then. And they didn't want him to make, you know, he'd made that first movie, which ruined them, exposed them, and showed everything they were doing to Mom. So then, you know, they didn't want that second movie to come out with him to create himself. For sure, they hated him so much. Very nice. Is he ruined their livelihood? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that car and a freight or anything. Mm -hmm. They probably used to, but we've got it jacked up to preserve the tires now. I have anything to do with it, it'll never leave this garage. I don't blame you. I would, She's so pretty. It's gorgeous. It still smells so good inside. <clears throat> it's like brand new. It has 55,000 miles on it. He drove wow. it. It was the family car. She drove it. Miss Helen, his mother, drove it till she died in 87. So it was driven. He bought both of these in October of 73. So it was driven 13, 14 years. It has 55,000 miles on it. Oh, 
Is there anything that you want to tell us? What do you want us to know? Who's got the E in there? Who's that there? Okay, Does anybody use it? Uh, can you do that? Yeah. Is there anything else you want to Have you seen your wife, Colleen? Now that your wife, you know, your, your wife Colleen passed away before you did. Can you make this little gadget here go off, these lights? You can walk up to it and touch it? Or do you even get close to it? Can you walk in front of me? My name is Sydney. We're filming a uh, we're filming a television show at your uh, at, in your home. I hope you don't mind me being here. I'm very intrigued with the, your life story, the history of McNary County and your time as sheriff. It's very intriguing. And I had a feeling that you knew Elvis Presley. I live in Tupelo, Mississippi, which is where Elvis was born. You know, Elvis was from Tupelo. And he just said, yeah, I know about Tupelo. <laughs> I know where Tupelo is. We just said that. Um, did you ever visit Tupelo? I said once. You came to Tupelo, or you, you maybe drove to Tupelo? Yeah. Did you know that in Lee County, did you, uh, you, you wouldn't know about this because he passed away several years ago and it was after your death, but our sheriff in Lee County, Harold Ray Presley, was ambushed as well, shot and killed. I wrote a little paper on at Ole Miss as a student. I made an A on it, by the way. <laughs> um, he walked right in front of me, though. Mm -hmm. He's been walking in front of me. Can you make this little thing go off right here by getting close to it? These lights right here have to light up, but it requires your energy to do it your spirit. So if you walk a little bit closer to it, it can make those bars light up. I 
He doesn't seem very amused. <laughs> what I'm getting is he's not very amused. He's probably not. <laughs> um, and he, he sees this as kind of like a magician or something. Yeah, he's kind of got a smirk on his face like. <laughs> You hear that? Mm -hmm. This place is good. Your flashlight is done. All right, we're going to walk down the hall. His bedroom has got a lot of dignity. Well, let's move down there. Okay, we're going to move down here. Okay. Look at that. Oh, I'm sorry. Put it over that house and say. Trying to clear out. It's not going to. It's going to. Bizarre. Isn't that something? It's the picture and it's done helper. It went up my went all the way up to orange a little minute ago. Mine did for a split second. Uh huh. How about that? Uh, Look at this. This is what I'm talking about. Now watch his picture. And the gun holster. Watch what it does. No way. Look. Oh. I know that. His boots. Nothing. His holster. That is amazing. Picking up on her watch. Mm mm. See, I thought so too, but look. See the way this, I figured it was a fluorescent one. Strange. Yeah. Oh, let's see. It's picking up over here. Now, now you're picking up on the light. Probably. Yeah, over by the piano. Something right here, man. <laughs> what? Hmm. I'm 
interest in Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Is there anybody in this room who would like to communicate with us? I'm Josh. Right here, Sandy, and this is Dina. Very nice ladies. Thank you. Is there anyone here in the den with us? Watching TV or where you used to hang out with the family. Is your family here? Okay, I've got mine with the other end. Okay.
Pauline, are you here? Where's Tina? That's a beautiful dress. Come on. Where's, where's Tina? Huh? Is Tina standing there by? Mm -hmm. Tina, can I touch your dress? Mm -hmm. Did you know her first one, Tina? Mm -hmm. No. I mean, no, you wouldn't have. I was only three years old. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Way before your time. Mm -hmm. She seemed like a little bit of a spitfire. Mm -hmm. um, she is very sweet. She does seem sweet, but she could get agitated. Mm -hmm. The one I told me that often. She had, uh, she was not somebody that uh, would um, provoke anything or look for trouble, but she um, she could get very agitated, mm -hmm. and she would speak her mind. Did she like cats? She did. She has a cat hair on her dress. <laughs> Yep. She had a little white cat. Did you have a white cat? Snowball? What's that? Not a 14. <laughs> That's a 14 little girl size, maybe. <laughs> maybe sizes were different back then. That's right. That's not a Mrs. 14 at all. Mm -hmm. She was very petite. Yeah, she was very petite. She was about what, five foot two or three? Mm -hmm. Or tall? Mm -hmm. The two inch heel, three inch heel. Yeah. Quite in here. She was here when we first came in. I hate it when they do that. Mm -hmm. I hate it when they do that. When we first come in, everything is all bouncing and energetic. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes they get quiet. Mm -hmm. It's like they scare them off or something. They don't know why we're here. Yeah, she's not in there anymore. I didn't pick up nothing. Um, is there movement around the curtain for a reason? Why is the curtain moving? The curtain is moving. The curtain was moving just now. Oh, yes, it was. Okay. That curtain was moving. Do you have vents over here? There's one on that one. I don't know about this one. There's one on that one, though. No. No vent. This, this, this was moving. I'll show you the way it was moving. Like that. The middle, what I could see through the camera was that middle the crease middle right here. Too, but I saw that. Did this that right there. was doing like this. Okay. This also did this. Like this. I saw that. Just as plain as day. Okay. Hey, I'm, I'm going to leave your bedroom now, okay? It's me moving. It's not The one I'm so sad that you left this. Oh, that's so cute. The one has small feet.
You can smell a guy right here. I, I smell a man in here. Man's corn. I smell it. Somebody had a knee injury. Mm -hmm. Nope. The orb activity we're seeing in the camera, there is no airflow in this room. Uh uh. There is, uh, it, it's not a knee injury, I don't think, that required surgery, but there's a knee injury. It's like a pulled muscle, a pulled tendons. Mm -hmm. You can feel the pain or, uh, with this person that wore these pants. I don't know who it is. Those probably belong to Mike. Mike hurt his knee mm -hmm. while he was wearing those. And he's doing this. Slumping a little. Listen. Michael, are those your pants that you wore when you play football? Yes or no? Can you answer me? Who is Mike? That is Buford mm -hmm. Steps on Colleen's side. Yeah. Is he deceased? No, I don't think so. Uh, I don't know. I mean, he might be. I don't know. I never asked if he was or not. So, all I'm picking up on is the energy that's left in this mm -hmm. using uh, psychometry skills. And that's reading energy in an object that's left behind by the owner. Did you hear that? It's female. Mm -hmm. There is still energy in this room. There is a man. Who is it? It's a younger guy. It's not an older guy. That basement is full of Mr. Pusser, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It just said Pusser. Sure did. I mean, they would have had little nephews and nieces and grandchildren, huh? That could have stayed in this room? Is anybody here that wants to talk to us? If you're here, move the lights on this EMF meter. All you got to do is come up and just wave over it and it'll move with your energy. Don't miss that. One human. It was not human. It was not human. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. That was a brow. That was a big brow. Whoa. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. I did. Where did it come from over there? Mm -hmm. What was that? Sounded like when somebody does their nails like that. I did do that, but did you not hear? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the, like all the orbs, like when you touch the hey, pants, they come out. Did you not hear that? Yeah. Talking, but it's like a, it's, just, it's a man, but it's not. It's man really. It's coming from under there. What's it under there? Is there a is there a closet over there? No, he walked off. There is a closet over there. There is a closet there. When you touch the pants, the oars come off the pants. Like, like literally, you can see them come off the pants. Yeah, look. What's in here that we do? Nothing. Making. There's a picture of a man. Really? In the back. With a little girl and a woman. Hmm. Look. 
look, yeah, you look have oils in. on your fingers. You have to yeah. be very careful. That's going to be there's family photos up here. No, that came off of mine. No, that was his. That Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It did. Yeah. Mr. Foster, are you with us in here? You are make this thing move. Oops. Is there going to be Sarah? Sheriff Buford, if you would, these little sparkly, beautiful little lights that look like uh, stars, would you mind walking come here. Come here. Come here. Walking in front of them so we can see you? Come here. You see somebody standing there? You see how it's got the lights blocked out on them? See that tall man with the head with the arm going up this way, arm down this way? Is that to my left right. or my right? Okay. Is that what he's talking about? Is that you, Sheriff Buford? Hold that light up for her. Okay. Hang on, you sit in there for a second. Mash that button up there on the top. See? Oh, yeah. If that's you, Sheriff Buford, would you mind, like, wave your hand up or something? Hold your hand up. Could be just a reflection. It's hard to tell on that yeah. screen. Hard to tell on it's, a black it's a reflection. Yeah. 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 I think I have the black screen. Mr. Pesser, are you in here? Yeah. Yeah. Mm 
Mr. Passer, are you in here? This sure was a fancy shirt. Mm -hmm. Love the color. I bet you look good in that. There goes the hat. And the mask. Your mask is going off. Do you mind us being in here? If it, if it's if it's okay for us to be here, light up that box. You see the box? Do you want us to leave? Light up the box if you want us to leave. The kitchen, that floor there, it kind of squeaks a little bit when you're yeah. crossing. Yeah. And I heard that. It was only me up there. I heard that and I turned around and there was a big tall shadow and it put hair up on my face. It stood the hair up on my arms. It kind of startled me a little bit because I wasn't expecting it. But it's a very tall, it was a very tall black shadow. I'm going to say at least about this tall. And it was standing right there at the edge of the bar. Just standing there like this right here. Like it wanted it, me to know that it it knows that I'm here. It, it, it definitely stood the hair up on my arms very fast. I bet. Really me too. Y'all know I don't get startled easy, but that startled me. Yeah. There is definitely some activity here. Definitely. It's just, it's random where it's going to be. Mm -hmm. This whole house is connected. Okay. Just one big circulation of energy. This is standing like I heard. It was like they went like this right here. We wouldn't have heard that downstairs. And they walked right through here. And then when I turned around, he was standing right here. And I said it was tall. This, but this is where we had the most activity from him too. Is there somebody in here with us? Can you please let me know if you're here? It was you the one that I saw. Here, closer, is that you? Was full of old earlier. There again, if somebody's here with us, that was my phone. If somebody's in this room with us, do you mind to tap that flashlight to turn it on? Mr. Pusser, are you here? Thank you. Do you mind to turn that back off for us? I know you know how. Can you turn it back off for me? If you want us to leave, cut it off. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Pucer. I'm going to ask one last question, and then we will leave. 
Is there another spirit here? Is there a female spirit in this house with you? It's moving. Mm -hmm. It's rolling. Can you turn that flashlight on, please? Lisa, there's somebody behind me. It's moving. Mm -hmm. I just felt like a little breeze. Was that you that walked right beside of me? Mr. Pusser, if that is you, can you? <laughs> Thank you. activity downstairs he he answered our questions with a flashlight on and off many 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 times awesome. he does not want us in the garage he made that perfectly clear he doesn't want us being around his cars mm -hmm. so good luck <laughs> I, I, I think what he meant was like to cross over that wall and get to the car yeah, yeah. okay so look i want to i want to tell you hold, hold, something hold, hold. let me check something we heard a growl in this last yeah. room on oh, the, the left, left so down at the end of the room. Did I not say to y'all there was a demon in there this house? There is no demon in this house. I don't get it all. Oh. Get it all. Get it all. Get it all. Get it all. At the conclusion of the night's investigation at the Buford Pusser Museum, evidence indicated that Mr. Pusser or something still resides at the sheriff's former home.